Hi, Daniel. Let's take a look at your latest set of essays. First, we've got your letter. Here's what you wrote. Dear Monica, I am writing to keep you up to date with new things that are happening in my life. Last week, I started working in a new company, No Name Company. They are focused on delivering technological solutions for people that are using digital payments. You know how much I love that. Thus, I could not decline this offer when it happened. Okay. Um, there are a few things that I want to talk to you about um, regarding this letter. This is a letter to your friend, which means that the tone needs to be informal. Okay. So there are certain things we do when we write our friends. Um, it's... A, and uh, some of these things that we do, they're a little different from formal letters. So, for example, in a formal letter, it would be very appropriate to write, I am writing this letter. In other words, you're telling the purpose for your writing. That would be absolutely appropriate in a formal letter. In an informal letter, we don't do this. Instead, what we do is we have some sort of greeting where we ask the person how they are. We make some reference maybe to something they wrote us in their previous letter. But certainly there is some sort of uh, friendly opening where you ask something about your friend. Oh, so sorry that it's been so long since I've written. You say one of these things, okay? So that's the first thing I would change here. Dear Monica, how are you? I'm sorry I haven't written for so long, but I have had a number of new things happening in my life. Okay? That would be more appropriate. Okay? So... You can see what I did. I, I asked how she is, and then I apologized for not writing. And, I, and then that way, I segued into this, the things happening in your life. Okay? Uh, let's see. They are focused on delivering technical solutions to people uh, using digital payments. I would have gotten rid of that R. It should have been who are, but that's a little strange. It, actually, it's who use. That would have been better. But what you could have done instead is for uh, two people using digital payments, that would have been ideal. You know how much I love that? And even this thus is a little formal sounding. So maybe you could have changed it to something like, so I couldn't decline this offer when it happened. It may seem weird that I resigned from my old job, but you... No, not you are aware, but you know that I am always looking to learn and evolve my programming skills. As I mentioned in my previous letter, my old job was stagnated. There was not much else for me to absorb and grow. Again, thus. So this new job fits like a glove because I got to experience, not I got, I get, you just started. So it's something that continues. I get to experience new tasks every day. My job not resolves, but revolves. It's a wrong word here. My job revolves around cloud services for a backend structure to... Oh, I see what you mean. My job resolves... I don't understand. I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. Are you trying to say that you, you fix cloud services? I'm not really sure, but it's unclear. Uh, now I can buy a house for my family and travel a bit more, especially when an E here, especially abroad, as you know, I love doing that. I hope you can visit me next month. I miss you. Sincerely. Okay. Um, let's see. You described your new work. Fine. You talked a little bit about some stuff going on in your life. Fine. Um, why you resigned. Okay, your job was, okay, fine. All right. Um, it's, I think it's fine. I mean, for the most part, it was good. There were just a few of those things. The tone, that it was too formal, that's something you have to be careful about. That will be graded, okay? They will be looking for that. So you have to make sure that you're using the right tone. If it's an informal letter, that you write informally. And that means expressions, and that means vocabulary words. So you have to be a little, um, a little more cautious about that. Okay, now let's take a look at your task two about travel. Okay, let's see what you said here. Traveling can be a mind-blowing experience no matter where you go. May that be locally or internationally. To travel is to learn cultural differences, yet traveling 
might as well bring downsides or limitations to our lives. Okay, I like this, except might as well was used wrong. Was So you mean something else here. You mean traveling might also bring downsides, okay? Uh, might as well has a very different meaning than um, the way you've used it. From an optimistic viewpoint, traveling is a good way to acknowledge cultural differences. Whenever traveling, people will get in contact with native food. For example, as a Brazilian, when I went to Spain, I could experience small to major differences in what we eat. Soda felt not way different. That's really uh, conversational. So you could have said uh, soda felt far different or soda felt uh, very different, even when using very similar ingredients. And that is related to how the cultural, the culture harvest, I don't understand that. And that is related to, I don't understand this word, and use those ingredients. All right, again, I'm a little confused by this statement. I'm not sure what you're saying. That cultural distinction is something you can only experience when traveling, thus it is very important to do so. Okay, um, I like this, although I didn't like your example about soda. Uh, I feel like you could have probably talked about something else. Um, and part of the reason I say that is because grammatically something happened with that sentence and I didn't understand it. But even from what I did understand, I think that maybe you could have talked about something else in terms of cultural differences, like not soda, which is um you know maybe not the greatest example of a cultural difference maybe you could have talked about something else maybe you could have talked about traditions or you know maybe religious customs or national holidays or you know just general mentality of the people who live there okay like you know some countries for example have a mid-afternoon siesta um you know compare that with another country that does not so you know, you could have talked about stuff like that, for example. However, traveling can be very expensive, especially, you got to put an E in front of this word, especially when living in an economically unstable country such as Brazil. Airplane ticket prices are, again with way, please don't use it like this, are out of reach. For example, going to the, you're missing a the here, USA can be as, mm, as expensive as three to four full monthly minimum wages. In other words, these sky high prices will bear sadness, that's a strange expression, to families, uh, will bear sadness as families are dreaming of going abroad, yet it is an unachievable goal as families are focused on trying to survive, not as much as traveling. All right. I like what you're trying to do here, but it's kind of falling flat because there are mistakes. So, um, bear sadness was strange. Now here you have as families are doing something. And then here again, you have as families are doing something. So it's repeated and it feels a little, well, repetitive. So try to avoid that. Use um, some different grammar, use some different um, sentence structures here. So, like I said, I didn't understand this bare sadness. Uh, as families are dreaming of going abroad, yet it is unachievable uh, when families are focused on trying to survive. Full stop, okay? And leave this out. In conclusion, traveling, no matter how, can be very good to experience new cultures outside of our own. However, that can bring discouragement as it can be a painful dream to achieve, especially, again, third time here, this word needs an E for families not thriving, but struggling, maybe, basic needs. Okay, so um, this was all right. Uh, like I said, I did have some issues uh, with coherence. I did have some issues with um, some of your examples. I thought they could have been a little stronger. Um, I also, you know, when we talk about the downsides of traveling, the disadvantages of traveling, Maybe we could talk about something else because I, you said that it, the disadvantage is that expensive. When I think of the disadvantages of traveling, I think of something a little, a little, uh, I guess, more spherical. 
One of the reasons I say that is because travel doesn't have to be expensive. So in other words, if you travel to a neighboring state or country, you know, or country or, or county even, or, you know, I'm not sure really what the um, regional, um, you know, geographical regions in your area are called. My point is, is that this essay is not just about international travel, which certainly, you know, can be expensive, but it's about even domestic travel, which does not have to be expensive. Okay, you can take a car and travel an hour away and be, you know, and that could be considered travel, right? That could be, um, that could be traveling or two hours away. So um, a lot of times people talk about the expense of travel. I don't really think that that's what they mean here. If they would have meant it if they had just talked about international travel, but they've included domestic travel as well. And so I kind of feel like the people at IELTS are looking for something different here. So let me give you an example of what you could have talked about here. You could have talked about um, why travel is very frustrating for the people who live in these um, in these areas. So think about some places that are absolutely overwrought with tourists, okay? Think about places like Venice, where, you know, they're talking about capping the number of visitors there per day, or having like a, like a visitor tax or something. So there are a lot of places that experience this. Um, there are a lot of places where the locals cannot afford to live there, because of things like Airbnb and they're pricing the local residents out of these areas. Okay. So that's something you can talk about as being a disadvantage of travel, or you could talk about the environmental effects of what travel does. Um, if you want to talk about airplanes, you could talk about jet fuel and the emissions uh, into the environment. You could talk about the rubbish that people create when, you know, you've got tourists everywhere and how hard it is for these places to dispose of all this waste. So these are what we think of when we talk about the disadvantages of travel. It's a little more spherical, I would say. Um, okay, so those are some thoughts for you. Go ahead, correct these, return them back to us, uh, keep working at it, okay? And we'll meet back here with your next set. Good luck.